Hey guys, and welcome to Ask Mark number 27. Um, I hope you all love Bruce, my stand-in last week. It seems like people did, because that was the one of the most popular Ask Marks we've ever had, and it didn't <laughs> feature me. So there's going to be a poll coming up. Should Sean even be in Ask Mark? Uh, look forward to that. Uh, that will be over on the community page that would have just popped up with this video. Um, yeah, thanks guys. Anyway, how, well, how what we can well, what we can do is I'll I'll just film like shot of uh, of Bruce just uh, just like moving um, and then we'll we'll just put him and with with your voice just speaking over. Yeah. Um, there you go. Best of both worlds. Best of both well, yeah, just just yeah. Cool. Thanks guys. <laughs> how are you Mark anyway? Have you had a fantastic week? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's been very rainy. <laughs> um, so I've been sort of indoors and my lawn needs a good mow, but of course you can't mow it. Um, so it's just getting longer and longer and the rain keeps feeding it, so you're like, no. Um, no but it's yeah, good, everything... that's good for the environment. All the all the bees love the True. long grass. There, there was True. a, I think, I don't know whether it was the government or some sort of charity, it's just like, don't mow your lawn, may or something. And I'm like, cool. I contribute to that okay, through the new. autumn and the winter times. <laughs> yeah, every winter. Every winter, <clears throat> autumn, late autumn and winter, I contribute to that. That's when why. there's no real animals that can, you know, other than my cats just messing on my lawn. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it has to be very thundery, hasn't it? It's very weird. Yeah, yeah, spring showers. Um, although I was talking to someone, and it's how we we don't really have like proper. Mm, seasons anymore when right. i was growing up it always used to be boom right you're in spring now this is what it's going to be like and then yeah. boom change it's summertime now it's kind of a bit all over the place and you have this i think they call it like an indian summer um like in october or something you have a heat <laughs> wave uh, and then it goes back to freezing and then it comes back warm again and then like mid may or something it snows yep. so oh, yeah you can't keep up with it <laughs> it's fantastic anyway there we go see our smart mm. mate always ends up with weather let's yeah, we'll uh, get to the questions yeah let's, let's we're crack british on. we talk we're about british. the weather that's all we do <laughs> that's it that's in a good stern <laughs> cup of tea what you put in first mark milk or water milk. oh no you, you put it in first yeah otherwise you burn the tea oh Cre cretin right <laughs> Question it's number not one. Cretin. <laughs> cretin, someone with a low IQ. Yeah, cretin. How dare you? <laughs> oh, don't bother, don't bother. Anyway, swiftly moving on. <laughs> don't make it worse. Oh, <clears throat> uh, so the first question is from Adam on Instagram. He says, "Hi, Mark. Mm -hmm. uh, this was on your oh. personal one, wasn't it? It was. It cool. was. Yes. So yeah. Hi, I Mark. Think. Thank, thanks, Adam. Yeah. Hi, Sean. Thanks. Uh, I hope you'll find <laughs> in this COVID roller coaster. Yes. Yep. It's been um, fun. It has. Uh, I've got a question for you about twin set regs. I'm about to buy mm -hmm. my first, and honestly, I don't see almost any difference between them. Firstly, I wanted to go with the Apex Tech Three, uh, but you mm -hmm. can buy. Uh, but you can buy, for example, the Tech Line. Uh, that's 450 euros cheaper, and specs are almost the same. So yeah, it needs a bit of help, Mark. Yeah. Help so there's a lot of. There's a lot of talk about sort of tech line and how they are effectively Apex copies. And it's it's kind of one of those things where you, you Apex have been tried and tested in the field, everywhere around the world. You know they work, you know they're safe, you know you can get them serviced and they're, they're tough as nails. You get a new brand which uh, I can't like officially say, uh, what is it, allegedly, um, they just copy the designs and uh, and just kind of make their own. And uh, yeah, it is that kind of thing of, one, I've I've never seen them. I don't think I've ever uh, sort of seen one in the flesh, so I can't specifically say, no, do not uh, mm. go. I have read people's uh, sort of personal accounts. They've used them and there's some people have good experiences, some people have bad experience, but you could say the same for any manufacturer. So it, it is tough to specifically say, oh, you should really uh, sort of avoid this brand or something because they're a smaller brand or whatever it is. Um, mixed uh, sort of, um, I can't think of the reports of like, because I think they're a Polish brand um, and I think most of their regulators 
apparently are made in Taiwan. Um, so ugh, I don't know. Whereas Apex are a British company and they're all made in uh, the UK. So um, yeah, it, it's a bit more sort of centralized. Um, personally, I'd go down the Apex route just because, okay, you know, you know the heritage, you know they're gonna work great, they're gonna be fine. I had a look through the Techline um, sort of web page, and it's okay, um, but there's very little information on any of the sort of product pages. It, it kind of shows you them, and yeah, that's kind of about it. I kind of, I wanna see like the Anstey test results and uh, sort of work of breathing, all that kind of stuff. And they don't really go into it. They just kind of show you a, a, a picture of them and a few details and that's about it. Mm. Um, personally, uh, I just go down the, the safer route. I know they're more expensive, but just consider it a bit more of a, an investment. Um, uh, yeah, it, it, it's either that or, yeah, my old adage of buy cheap, buy twice. Um, if they um, they really are as bad as some people say they are, um, then yeah. But that being said, it's hard for anybody to make a bad regulator nowadays, especially in the EU, because they have to pass certain requirements. Yeah. So actually, yeah, no one can make a, a bad regulator because they, they have to pass EN 250 and other um, other requirements so um it's hard but personally i i just go down the apex route just because it's it's far safer and easier to get uh, sort of reliable servicing uh, and maintenance yeah i mean that's what i would say definitely you know with a, with an established brand like apex if you were to purchase something from them whether it's something that's really cheap to really expensive the <clears> customer <throat> service uh, is going to be exactly the same the help that they're going to issue is going to be exactly the same you know whether mm. the product's old or whether the product's brand new. If you've got an older product that might need servicing or might need some help, they might be able to help you in some sort of way. Whereas in a new company, that's always a little bit, it's a bit gray. They might be a bit cheaper, mm. but because they're a little bit gray, um, you know, because they're not really tried and tested, you might not be able to, you probably won't have that customer service with them. Let's be honest, you know, mm. that's 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 what I would go in, you know. Uh, if the brand itself is, is is big, tried and tested, then it's worth <clears throat> paying the extra because in the long run, it, it's going to be way more beneficial for you, you know, rather than having to contact a Polish company uh, to mm -hmm. get a regulator serviced or to get a part or to get that, you, you know what I mean? It's, it's just, it can open mm -hmm. up a can of worms. Um, and, and as I like to say as well, uh, time is way more valuable than money you know if you buy a cheaper reg set yes you might be diving with them a couple of times but if an accident happens or they need servicing or something you might not have them for a long amount of time because there could be issues you know yeah. i mean you're going to get yeah. that with any regs anyway but like if you were to buy a regulator from apex you know that one the kit's going to be there to get serviced um mm. you know whether you're in the eu or or, or britain england you know what I mean? They've got really good customer service, so you know that it'll get shipped, it'll get fixed, or replaced, or repaired, or you know, they might it might be beyond repaired, but because they've got good customer service, you know, you might get some money knocked off depending on you know your circumstances, which is mm -hmm. yeah, more that's more beneficial, you know, <clears throat> having spending that little bit more extra, definitely. Yeah, I mean and yeah, Apex, you can't go far wrong because there was that, what was it, an XTX 50 that was lost at sea for like seven years or something ridiculous. They got it out, they kind of cleared some of the mud out of it and it still passed the, the Anstey um, uh, EN 250 tests. Exactly. It's like the Apex. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. See, and you wouldn't get that little conversation that I had from Bruce, guys. You wouldn't get that from Bruce. Anyway. <laughs> Let's go to question number two. It's from T Flowers. Again, this is one of your your Instagrammies, wasn't it? Personal to you. Yeah. Um, so yep. the first question: What do you reckon the T stands for? I'm going to say Tyrannosaurus. Um, Tyrannosaurus I, I, I flowers. Had, yeah, I had Terence in my Terence. Yeah. Flowers. Yeah. Terence flowers. Hey, let us know, T Flowers. And he goes, Hey, keep up the awesome content. Uh, thanks, but you're not talking to me, so. Cool. Uh, you explain things really, really well. Thank you, I do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have a request. Could you do a video on how wings are attached to back plates and also setting up 
twin cylinders, uh, cylinders thanks mm -hmm. from across the pond. Mm, yes, good day. Mm. Um, no, that's that's Australia. Um, uh... French? Hello. <laughs> maybe his name. Maybe it was French. He's Terry. 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 Um, oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, atta <laughs> attaching uh, sort of wings, wings and back plates onto uh, onto twins is is really easy. Um, all it is is. You'll, you'll have your twins, uh, so two cylinders, same size, twinning bands, so uh, sort of metal sort of figures of eights, and that sort of clamps them together so they're parallel because you've got that manifold join between the valves. You don't want them to kind of bend because it's soft and it will just break and it will make a loud noise. Um, so twinning bands, they're always 11 inches apart. Um, you'll have some bolts that run through those. That's what's kind of holding those twinning bands uh, sort of in position. The bolts stick out and they basically go into your back, basically. Um, those will be 11 inches apart. Those will line up with holes on the wing uh, of your BCD. In the center, you'll have two holes and they will also be 11 inches apart because that's just industry standard. The whole thing was is that the original back plates were always 13 inches tall and then they went in an inch on the top and the bottom and that's where they put the, uh, the mounting holes. So of course, 11 inches and um, and yeah, so, so your wing gets sandwiched in there and then your back plate goes over the top and sort of pins the uh, the wing in position. So those two bolts then go through your back plate, uh, one at the top, one at the bottom, and then you just use uh, just sort of wing nuts or some kind of nut to um, to sort of clamp it down and that sort of clamps the, the cylinders, the wing in the middle, and then your back plate, boom, that's it. Uh, and you'll do that before and after every dive. Um, so that you can break it all down, wash it properly, and um, yeah, that's it. It, it is easy. Um, once you actually have the bits in front of you, yeah, it, it's really quick and easy. Uh, but yeah, I can I can definitely do a, a video to, to show you. Um, so stay tuned. Ooh, exciting. Mm. <laughs> I'm excited by that. Cool, hopefully that answers your question. Uh, the next mm -hmm. question is from Ben. He says, I always hear the next dive should be less deep than the, the one before. But what if I want to do, what if I want to make a test dive at least say 10 meters uh, before I took my dive to 30 meters? Uh, yeah, not much will happen. I think this was uh, we, with modern dive computers. I don't think this really matters anymore. If you look up, um, uh, what is it like reverse profiles or something i think they called it um and yeah with the old like navy dive tables where you, you go down to a certain depth you stay there for a certain amount of time you come back up and then you do a repetitive dive it would penalize you quite heavily for then going down deeper whereas most of us dive with dive computers anyway so you can kind of do whatever you want at the moment your dive computer is working it all out so I don't think that rule really applies anymore uh, if you're diving with a dive computer. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I, th I think that's it actually. Just it, that it used to be a rule. I don't think it's uh, sort of as important. Um, I think people have like done plenty of tests, and with modern technology, it's, it's really not an issue. Um, so just stick to what your dive computer is telling you, and you'll be fine. You can do kind of whatever you want. Sweet, I want to go and dive in a volcano. I can do whatever you I want. Do it once. <laughs> exactly. Hey, it's an experience. What was? No, you probably wouldn't because it's dense. It's like liquid rock. You wouldn't be able to sink, I don't think. What if you were to do it? Like, so what you'd do, you do? You'd get. You need to go to the point where the magma meets the ocean, and then you've got to dive in that sweet spot. So it's a bit watery and it's a bit magmary. Magmarine, <laughs> that's a word. Yeah, technical term. See, technically, um, you wouldn't get this with Bruce, guys. You wouldn't get this no. with Bruce. I mean, it's just rock. So uh, you you wouldn't. It, it would just like smack you on the back of the head. Can you stop ruining you things for me? <laughs> Jeez. You're so mean. <laughs> with your science. <laughs> oh, I can do science, me. Uh, hopefully you would get that, guys. That's Brainiac. 
to our oh, UK. That takes you back. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, man. Do they still make that show? <laughs> Probably. Anyway. No, not with Richard Hammond at least. No, no. <laughs> I know uh, Vic Reeves did it at some point. Did he? Yeah. Yeah, that does ring a bell. Yeah. Anyway, let's they swiftly move it, yeah. on. Yeah, let's actually answer some <laughs> other questions. So, question number four is from Sean. He says, hey again, Mark and Sean. What up, Sean? Uh, I'm, com I'm contemplating getting the new Apex Lunar Advanced Torch when it's available, but I want to ask if there's any alternatives to consider. I really like the fact that it's factory sealed, rechargeable, and packs a good amount of lumens. Many thanks, Sean. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the Apex Lunar Advanced, um, as Sean says, is, is a factory sealed torch. I think it's what, 3,600 lumens? So, um, um, yeah, I think the burn burn time was about three, uh, no, I think it's about two hours uh, at max. And um, yeah, it's a beast of a torch, comes with a really fancy Goodman handle as well. Um, competitors, uh, the only other like self-contained uh, sort of torch, or sorry, the, the only other like hand Goodman style mounted torch that I can think of is the Fin Sub. They do a 3600. But I don't think that's factory sealed and it doesn't have that display on the back neither. Uh, one of the good things about the, the Lunar range, especially the standard and the advanced, is they have that digital display which literally spells out how much time in minutes and hours that you have remaining of, uh, of battery life. Um, the uh, light and motion, they got the solar, but I don't think they go up to that power. Uh, I think they only got, go up to about 2,000 lumens. Um, so no, that's, that really is kind of it. Apex really are sort of shooting for the moon with this one. It's a, it's a beast of a torch. Um, so if you want power, then yeah, this is something to, uh, to definitely look at. And the Goodman handle is really fancy. Yeah, most of them are just a, a really uninspiring just block of aluminium or something but this one is sort of funky and you can rotate the handle you can move it backwards and forwards it's rubberized as well um yeah it, it's definitely worth waiting for i think june is when they're due to arrive um so you haven't got much of a wait um so yeah in the next uh in a month or two you'll start to see them hitting shelves um but no, I don't think there's much. I mean, Halcyon, they don't have any torches that I'm aware of that are that powerful. Um, Ammonite, none that none that are like self-contained um, and and factory sealed. Uh, no, so this this is a, a very unique, powerful beast of a torch. So yeah, definitely worth checking out. Yeah. And obviously, if, if you don't need to use the full three and a half thousand lumens, you can dial it down and then just have this monster burn time. So yeah, it is definitely worth checking out. Sweet. Or just use a candle. Yep. yep. Factory sealed candle. Yep. Yep. Just, just with like your SMB or something over the top of it. Yeah. It's fine. No worries. Cool. That is a very, we get quite a lot of questions about the Lunar. That that whole range from Apex seems to be, uh, it's ticked all the boxes. A lot of comments are, I wish the Mark 1 was still, was still here because I'd buy that over this, but. I got one. Make, yeah, make me an offer. <laughs> 20 quid. Although I love this one. You can't have it. It's uh, <laughs> fine, be like that. Um, <laughs> and if anyone asks, Mark 1, we're never say never. But I would say within the next three years, that, that nothing's going to happen there. No, it's going to be a while before we go back into production. We, we've got a lot of other things to, to sort out. But yeah, yeah, exactly. It's nice. Exactly. It's nice cool. torch. It is. Anyway, right. So question five is from Darren. I have the Perdix AI and I'm thinking of a backup. Can the Aqualung transmitter I use, uh, I use with my Perdix feed two computers, i.e. if I buy a Terek? Good choice, sir. Good choice. Uh, will I get gas info on both com both computers from one transmitter? Now, I'm going to say no. Well, you're wrong. Because um, that's literally my setup. I have a Perdix AI and a Terek. And yeah, it, it's... So uh, a wireless air transmitter is just a, a beacon, basically. So once you turn it on, it just sort of says, oh, this is how much gas I have uh, or the, the tank pressure. 
um, at any given moment. And with, uh, with these ones, with the permanent pairings, you just type the serial number of the transmitter into your Perdix. If you type the exact same number into your Terek, then they both show the exact same information. And as the tank pressure drops, they both show the exact same information. So yes, they, it will work. Um, and that is literally my setup. Um, I have both a, a Perdix mm -hmm. AI and a Terek. And uh, yeah, they're both paired to an Aqualung transmitter as well. And yeah, it works. So yes, yeah, it will work. <clears throat> I've been meaning to ask you, Mark, can I have my Terek back, please? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Give it back to me. You've had it for well over a year now. <laughs> yeah, it's very interesting. I'm glad that that does make sense. Yeah, as I say, if, you, if, if the info can be locked in mm. and it, yeah, you know, it literally that one transmitter just talks to those two computers. Yeah, yeah I think it's, it's... It's quite smart, isn't it? Yeah. I, these I, guys, they yeah. think a lot about a lot of things. I, I don't know all the ins and outs, but um, because some... Some like the Suntos, they work on different, uh, I think it's like frequency bands. They've got like 20 or 30 different frequencies that they can broadcast on. And then when you start to like set up, it, it just searches for a certain code and then you make sure that the computer is on the same frequency or bandwidth, whatever it is, as the uh, the transmitter. And then it's just always listening for that. I, I imagine it's sort of similar things with um, uh, with these like permanent pairings where it's just okay this is my serial number and then the computer goes okay does this match yes okay i'll listen only to that um yeah and it's cool paired for life so you never have to go in and type in the serial number every time you do it once and that's it cool <clears throat> cool right so we have one more question mm -hmm. uh question number six it's from scuba bond mm -hmm. He says, or they say, hi Mark slash Sean. Hello, how are you both doing? Love your videos. Um, I'm doing very well, thank you. Uh, this potentially might be my last Ask Mark, but <laughs> we'll, let the, we'll let the poll decide about that. I'm joking. How are you, Mark? Or, or how are you feeling right now since the beginning of the video? I'm okay, I'm a little cold. Um, I should have left my hoodie on. I thought, no, I'll be brave. I'll wear my, my t-shirt, but I think the sun's gone in, so it's suddenly gone cold. That's what you get for filming in your garage. I know. <laughs> I'm in my nice spare room. I say spare room. It's in between the landing and the toilet. Um, it's more of a, just a, a, a posh hallway <laughs> that I'm in right now. Anyway, he says, uh, love your videos. So thank you very much. Um, I dive in tropical waters where there are lots of discarded fishing nets and lines. And we're trying to cut away to get as much of them back to the surface when we dive. Oh, well done. Mm -hmm. um, I usually don't wear gloves which leads me to getting an occasional cut or two on yep. my hands and fingers. Yes, oh, that would really, especially if it's salt water. Oh. Yeah, to the barnacles, yep. <clears throat> yeah, oh, oh, bless you. Um, I was looking into various gloves, the Admiral 3 Zero Therm Tropic Pro Glove, mm -hmm. etc., which can be worn during dives, but I'm not sure what to search for while I'm buying them. Do you think any of these ones above are good, uh, good or a good buy, sorry? Or if you have any alternatives that I can look <clears> into. <throat> so Mark, gloves, help him out. Yeah, um, so the Admiral 3, so that's a Aqualung glove. They're quite funky. They've got like tattoo designs all over them and they've got, um, mm. oh, what is it? It's not love and hate, it's like love and dive or something, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, they've got a Amara um, palm which is like a, a suede alternative. Um, mm. It's, um, yeah, you'll see a lot of that with thinner gloves and that's what you should be looking for. Amara is A-M-A-R-A. -A -A. It's, a, it's a certain fabric. It's, yeah, it, it's like a, yeah, leather alternative, but it is quite soft, but it's, it's a bit more abrasion resistant. Uh, fourth element cool. zero therm is a dry layer. Uh, I wouldn't wear that. Uh, Tropic Pro, who's Tropic Pro? Is that Scuba Pro or Bear? I think it's Bear. Um, I think that's similar with that. A lot of like tropical gloves, um, they, they have that sort of Amara material, which um, yeah, is what you should be looking for. Um, because yeah, it is a bit more abrasion resistant because neoprene, if you're using it a lot, it'll just kind of shred them, so do be careful. You can find Kevlar, but they're typically on thicker gloves, um, which you don't want or need. Uh, you can just wear like 
heavy duty um, like rubber gloves, like washing up gloves or stuff. Um, that's pretty good. And if you don't need the thermal uh, protection, uh, but you will lose your dexterity. Whereas Amara, you still have uh, a decent amount of dexterity. Um, but yeah, fishing gear can get quite abrasive. Uh, especially with soft, wet skin, so it is oh, important. Don't. Yeah, <laughs> it is important to uh, to protect your hands, um, and yeah, because as soon as like marine life starts kind of growing on it, um, barnacles, all that kind of stuff, we used to have problems with um, freshwater. Um, oh, I can't think of the name. Like freshwater mussels and stuff, and. Um, yeah razor sharp uh, in some of the dive sites um, so you'd have students and they they sort of grab hold of something and yeah just like shreds their hands um, because yeah don't don't touch if you're not wearing gloves um, yeah but yeah look for uh, look for anything with Amara uh, or like a, a Kevlar kind of weave or yeah just some uh, real like heavy duty those kind of blue gloves that you see um, because yeah, they're, they're basically like marigolds um, and they, they do sort of protect your hands. You can get vulcanized as well, which are pretty tough. Um, but again, dexterity, you lose that. But with Amara, it's kind of best of both worlds. Protects your hands, but it's also, you can still feel and what you're doing. Cool. Uh, with the marigold, you make, if you want it to be most efficient as possible, you have to have the fluffy bits at the ends, the feathers, mm -hmm. and they have to be pink. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for, for buoyancy and trim. <coughs> exactly. There we go. And that is it, guys. Ask Mark 27 is done. Mm -hmm. um, next week is going to be a bit different because someone is having some time off. Mm -hmm. Am I allowed to say what's happening? Yeah, you can. Because I'm, I'm playing uh, me with and Mark are finally, yeah, Me and Mark are finally getting married. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Mark is getting married. I am though, getting so married. You wish him can wish him congratulations uh, or commiserations in the <laughs> comments below, whichever way you feel about that. Um, yeah. Me personally, congratulations. Being married is awesome. I love it. So yeah. So so I'm going to be away for a, a week and a half, but I filmed a whole bunch of stuff, uh, sort of extra to kind of keep yeah. going. Um, but for this kind of stuff, because we we do it. Um, yeah, like a couple of days before. Uh, yeah, so I don't think there's going to be one next week. Now, there isn't going to be one next week because, again, obviously, unless you want me to phone you, or what you're getting, I could, I could during the wedding, I can, I can, we can do it like, sorry, love, I can't say I do or yes. I've got asked Mark to film. I've got other um, questions no, to answer first. Exactly. More important, you know, someone needs to know about rebreathers mm. or backplates or. Anyway, anyway, what I was going to suggest, mm -hmm. if if I get questions, mm -hmm. maybe we could have an Ask Sean. Yeah. Uh, uh, a edition. singularity show, a limited edition Ask Sean. Now, obviously, you can kind of ask me bits about scuba diving, but it has to be like the most basic stuff. <laughs> so probably don't do that. And we won't stand uh, by the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, exactly that. Um, because there's only six questions, basically, if I get six questions that I can answer, whether that's about YouTube, um, what, anything to do with scuba diving and in the media, perhaps, mm -hmm. or social media bits, so anything to do with marketing and media in the in scuba diving world, or if you're a hiker mm -hmm. and you want to know some bits about hiking or mountain biking, um, leave me a question with the hashtag ask sean um, and if i get six that i can answer or that are appropriate i will film my own ask sean um, if i don't then obviously it ain't gonna happen so don't worry too much about it um it will just be replaced with a uh, daily scuba news so that's what's gonna happen basically um if i can do an ask a little q a with me Brilliant, awesome, I'll do it. Um, if not, it will just be a daily scuba news. Um, which also means for the next week and a half, unfortunately, um, it's gonna be my gorgeous face for the next week and a half on daily scuba news. So apologies about that. Uh, but yeah, I think that, that sounds right. So yeah, this will be the last Ask Mark. Uh, where it potentially could be the two of us forever, depending on that vote. Uh, and then yeah, but yeah, seriously, if you want to know anything about scuba diving and the media, so 
uh, monitoring or helping your Instagram page, your YouTube channel, that's my, that's my golden. So if you want to start a scuba diving YouTube channel, ask me some questions. I know these things. I've been running a scuba diving channel mm. or uh, I guess not, not, obviously not by myself. Mark's been there with me as well, but you know, the, the core crux of a YouTube channel, I've been running it mm. for the past, what, five years. Yeah. Definitely. I've had full control over it. Yeah. So yeah, I do know some stuff, guys. Camera work I like Bruce, as well. who knows nothing. You can, you can explain. Uh, yeah, camera yeah. works right. Camera works pretty values, simple. Yeah. Nah, just Google that. <laughs> Google that shiz. Don't worry about anything else. Don't talk to me about that. <clears throat> but yeah, so going forward, if I can get an R strong, stick an R Sean in there. If not, uh, yeah, we'll do a DSN. Obviously, that means there's going to be no deco stop. So there's no mm -hmm. deco stop until like the 5th of June. Mm -hmm. Um, we didn't have one last week. We were technically going to film one this week, but then I thought it might be a bit odd having not having one, having one, and then not having one. So I just blanked it off. We just have a couple of couple of weekends where there's no daily scuba news, but there's, there's nothing wrong with that at the end of the day. Um, surface intervals, like Mark said, he's already pre filmed some, so there's going to be no votes. Um, you'll know when the next vote comes up. Um, because it'll pop it'll up. Come up. <laughs> funny, funny enough. Yeah, it'll come up. Uh, but that'll be in a, maybe a couple of weeks um, so we can get voting on that as well. But the videos that he has made are very popular ones um, or they will do really, really well. So yeah, you won't be disappointed with what Mark's come up with. Uh, you might be disappointed in my editing, but hey, whatever. <laughs> and that is it. So we're leaving it on that bombshell, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I'm not going to end it. So could you please quickly jump in, Mark, and overtake from me blabbering. Thank you very much. Yes, so if you do have any questions for myself, then uh, try to use the hashtag Ask Mark. If you've got any questions for Sean, use the hashtag Ask Sean, uh, and he might do a, a dedicated video for that. Um, if you have any video ideas, um, like the second question, and, uh, and you want me to do any videos on anything in particular, then yeah, by all means, let us know, and I'll... Uh, I'll draw something up I'll make a video for you to show how to explain something or put something together disassemble something whatever it is just let us know down in the comments we'll see what we can do um, if you have any um, corrections to anything that you've seen or any other advice then uh, yeah sort of pop it down in the uh, sort of questions and of course everyone everyone can read that um, don't forget you can always check out our merchandise store if you're watching this on YouTube underneath the video there'll be a little banner where you can buy this t-shirt um, or any of our other stuff or if you click on the avatar um the little like simply scuba button click on that and then along the top there'll be a, a little tab that's just called store and that will show all the uh, sort of different designs so that you can check it out uh, if you watch daily scuba news you'll know there's a discount code running so watch some of those if you don't know to uh, to get some money off of that don't forget to check out simplyscuba.com because we have all sorts of amazing uh scuba diving equipment so check us out thank you for watching and of course safe diving stay classy scuba divers